Great. All right. So, uh, Greg, did you have some uh, questions or comments uh, for us? Yeah, I did. Thanks. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Greg Dennis. I'm from uh, one of the co-founders of Voter Choice Massachusetts, uh, educating about ranked choice voting in the state. Uh, I just want to first thank you because I've read a lot of the minutes. I don't read all the minutes, but I've seen how much you've really dug into the issue. Um, I know also you received a report from Howie Fain some time ago that you looked into. Um, just as a general point, we're trying to pay attention to a lot of these implementations that cities and towns are looking into around the state and just feel free to reach out to us. We don't have all the answers, but maybe we could help with something in the future if you have any questions or want to try to rely on us in any way. Uh, I am curious, I do have a few questions. I was curious what the quote was for democracy suite from LHS. I've heard it was quite <laughs> high. I know that East Hampton didn't pay a whole lot, but you know that they could have quoted you a lot more <laughs> and how that price compares to um, the cost of holding a preliminary election each year. Um, is know, East Hampton answer... using democracy suite? Yes, they are. And they paid an initial fee of uh, $8,000 and they pay $800 a year for the license on that. Okay. I imagine that now that that's been negotiated that we could probably negotiate something similar to them. Yeah, the quote they gave us of the original was not one that they expected us to pay, but was rather one based on uh, statewide or regionwide usage of the software, not municipality. So, uh, yeah. Do you happen to have the number or can you, can you share the number? Uh, I do not have it on me now. Okay. Um, uh, I also want to say that there's, there could be, I don't want to make any promises, but there could be grant money available to help defray any cost. There's enough sort of nonprofits interested in seeing this happen that some money could be perhaps made available, um, from one of the nonprofits. And if you're interested in that, you could ask us and we could follow up. Um, and then I also just had a question about the, the, I know you're looking into buying new voting machines, so you're choosing between the ESNS model and the Dominion model, um, whether or not using the ESNS and then you putting those cast vote records through an off the shelf tabulator, like the universal tabulator, or maybe something else that's free. Um, is possible, even though that system as a whole isn't certified, I'm actually not sure whether or not, well, you could use it anyway, like Cambridge uses something else anyway, even though the system as a whole isn't certified. And I don't know if you investigated that question, what the result of that was. And so those are my comments and my questions. Yeah, one of our, uh, we'll answer because it's short. Uh, one of the, you know, solutions we looked at was using the whole democracy suite. And, um, you know, that's certainly an option. Uh, and so is the uh, you know, open platform for um, uh, the open source software for calculating it. Uh, but, uh, you know, those are only a couple of considerations. So, yeah. Thank you. Actually, can I ask Greg a question quickly? Um, in 30 words or less, why do you think it failed in the state? Uh, the primary, we tried to replicate uh, the success of Maine, which was a lot of door-to-door -door organizing, a lot of house parties and meeting people. And it's very hard to educate in a 30 second ad. It takes a like a two minute conversation. And with COVID, we couldn't have those conversations. I think that's the primary reason. Okay. Not a lot of Thanks. people. There was very little educated opposition so much as there was just lack of education about what it was. Okay. Well, some of the concerns put forward by the the governor and supporters were valid. Uh, you know, they just, you know, we didn't have time to also, you know, point out to people that, you know, those are valid concerns, but this solution is still better. If that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something I would, I would note, I uh, went on to one of the webinars uh, from the Facebook group promoting ranked choice voting for the state. And I was kind of disappointed in it. Um, the people who were presenting it were much more focused on how they got involved and their campaign instead of educating the public. I posed a, a question or two about, well, if, if in fact uh, question two passes for the state, 
what are the implications of that for individual municipalities? Never got answered. Instead, there were these, these long discussions of how can you get involved in this campaign? And, and that's a that's a turnoff to uh, uh, people who are wanting to tune in and get educated. Talk about every Zoom meeting ever. <laughs> I cannot Except tell you the number one. of Zoom meetings <laughs> I've been on for like half an hour to an hour, and they spend half that time introducing themselves. And it's like, don't care. Just want to know how my retirement fund's going to be affected. Anyway, on that note, should we get started? <laughs> yep, yep. And I just wanted to um, briefly address um, to Greg's question. We did meet with the uh, town's attorney to get clarification on some of these voting system questions. And it sounds like so long as the underlying machine is certified, we can work with the state elections division to kind of get them on board with whatever software solution we then decide to pursue. Um, so there's some flexibility there, but we need to work with them and um, keeping them happy will help the whole thing kind of move forward. Right. It doesn't require formal approval as such. And if I could add one more, I'm sorry, I'm taking up time, but I, one more comment. I would try not to let the Secretary of State's office scare you away from certain solutions. I think if you ask them what to do, they'll tell you to do a home rule that's like fully specified down to the minute detail and that you could you should only do you using certain solutions and certain software systems or whatever. East Hampton forgot about all that, wrote a very, as you know, general home rule and just did what they wanted to do. And as soon as that gets passed by the legislature, well, no, that's the law. So you can, I would just avoid letting them scare you away from certain solutions that seems like it might make sense for your town. All right, so we're ready to move to approving the last minutes. Let me see if I can pull this up. Uh, let's see, is this the last one? When was our last meeting? September 29th. Okay, so this one is, it seems like long ago. I guess because it's all of the elections and everything, it's been that long. Can it be that long? <laughs> Just been a crazy time. All right, so this is the, the meeting that was really entirely focused on meeting with Lauren. Um, so changes that anyone would like in these minutes? No, no changes by me. It's all right. There's one RVC in there as opposed to RCV. Sorry for saying that. Good catch. Where's that at? It was on the first page. Ah, there it is. Right here, if the own choice voting in a local. Yeah, it doesn't help that then cast vote record is CVR. So it's like the same, <laughs> like the same three letters and just keep scrambling them. Although she doesn't want us to use CVR. <laughs> yeah, right. well, in, the, in yeah. the report, I just wrote it out. That's, we should avoid too many acronyms anyway. Um, starts to look like Jingo. <laughs> Right. Anything else? Oh, I see another ranked voice. Uh, question six. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That must be my fingers.
I don't see anything else. All right. Move to approve as amended. Second. All right. All in favor? All Aye. 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 Sure. All right. So I guess the only changes are just catching those two RCV things, Sue. So you yeah. you don't need okay. to change anything. All right. All right. So what's officially next? So um, the main two things we need to get done are to get some of those last bits on the report done. And Lauren finally just sent us that special act language. And I think there's a bunch of things in there. Um, and some of it's kind of relevant to what Greg was saying that um, she wanted us to get fairly specific. And so I think we're going to need to think a little bit about that, just exactly how specific and detailed we want the special act to be in terms of specifying the, the ranked choice voting method as opposed to being more of a generic East Hampton approach of just broad strokes. Um, so I guess officially following the agenda, we need to start the report and then the special act will kind of fall under things we couldn't uh, foresee because it just happened. <laughs> so let's pull up. Um, and John, I saw you just sent me some comments. Um, How so timely of me. Just sort of sprinkle those in as we go. Um, sure. I have comments as well, but um, I can just mention them as we pass by. Super. All right, so let me pull this up. I had one uh, sort of global comment, uh, and it, it's closely related to the um, the recommendations section. Uh, it seems to me that it would be very helpful for the town council if we had a section uh, that explicitly identifies all the decisions that they need to make. Yeah, it should be right up front, uh, so that they can essentially use that as a checklist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should present our findings right up front, and then they can go through the rationale and the reasoning afterwards. That makes sense to have an abstract. And I think yeah. that'll tie in with the timeline as well, with what they need to do as part of the timeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, as much as we'd like to think that people will always go through and read everything, the reality is, as many may not. And, you know, right. uh, if, you know, under that assumption, we need to make sure that the most important information is right up front, which is, here's what we want you to do. So, and I think the distinction that I was making was uh, that there are certain nuances that get explored in the text about whether they should consider this or consider that. And it would be easy for them to miss uh, that they have to make a decision regarding those sorts of things. So it's not, it's not like a, a, a large recommendation, you know, buy this piece of equipment or best software, but rather uh, the, the more subtle kinds of things that could easily be lost. All right, so, so we have a, a bunch of different things to do. So would you like to first go through the existing text and give me the comments you have on that? Or do you wanna start by um, drafting some of these parts? You know, so I think they're kind of related. So the, the timeline, these list of the things to highlight that need to make sure they get done. Um, by the, the town to implement RCV. And uh, offer... one of my comments was also uh, a much a, a, like a, a larger issue rather than going into the details. So before we jump in the details, I would like to address that. But um, sure. yeah. Um, oh, okay. Uh, basically, um, 
the I there was a lot of confusion for me around uh, tabulation methods uh, for ranked choice ballots um, and how that gets approached through the whole thing, uh, because uh, having read through it, there is a hard assumption that uh, this document's making that uh, the person understands why multi-choice or, or sorry, uh, multi-seat uh, races are more complicated to calculate. Um, it does not explain it up front. It really has to, because otherwise none of the details matter, right? Like, oh, there's these different, you know, you know, we the document basically says like, oh, well, multi-seat, which is most of what we have, is more complicated. And so we have to discuss these different methods of calculating re results. And if all the people go into, you know, go into this knowing the basic pitch that they've gotten about single seat victories, they're not going to understand any of it. And they're going to miss that logical first understanding of what the problem is. And so what follows is all these methods of dealing with that problem, but they don't know what the problem is. All they know is that it's theoretically more complicated and, and they don't really know why other than that there's more winners. Um, so I really strongly think that we need to put like right up front uh, a visual um, representation of here is how you know votes get redistributed uh, in a general sense in multi-seat elections, but how that gets calculated can vary based on you know how we decide to implement this. Here are the different ways that people have done it in the past, and this is our recommendation, right? Because right now all it does is say multi-seat winners are more complicated and we've looked at Wiggum and you know uh the other come ones and you know well we you know here are the pros and cons are those and people really have like even like going into it just you know imagining myself as somebody with no information i was like i have no idea what they're talking about right like what does this apply to how does this apply i thought we just hey if the last person you know didn't get enough votes we kick the last person off and then we redistribute the votes. What's with all this like calculations and stuff, right? So we really need to make that case solid right up front. And I just want to interject. Um, I think Peggy is in the room, but Tanya, I can't get at her with your document up on the screen. Thank you. Let me get her. It will not let me in there. Why will it not let me in? Yeah, I see she's an attendee, but I can't click on the tab for some reason. That's how I promoted you all to panelists. Yeah. Is it because we're recording, you think? Hmm. No, I see Andy there also. Oh, yeah, I there's click. Andy. Yep. There's Andy, but um, I'm sure Peggy's under attendees and she can't, she's not in here because I can't click on it. To, I don't her. see Peggy under attendees. I don't see her just listed see either. Anderson. No, she's under. She's not in the panel. She's in the attendees tab. Yeah, I know. I don't see him. There. I don't see her either. All I see is Andy. Oh, I see what you're saying. Never mind. You're right. That's just Andy. Duh. Okay. No, she's not here yet. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm putting the Andy in there as a panelist. Okay. There we go. Okay. Sorry, everybody. Still looking for Peggy. That's why. Thank you for the promotion. <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess my question would be, I mean, so we already have, we have an appendix that has a whole calculation and you can see sort of how complicated it gets. I didn't want to embed that in any early section. So I'm not sure how that helped. So the, did you have sort of a vision for where, like where you wanted to fit this in? And as long as it's above any discussion of the different tabulation methods, it's fine, right? You know, the core problem is, is that without understanding what the problem is, you know, I am, and I certainly would, and I would expect anybody else to just <laughs> skim over a section about tabulation methods or just be very confused by it, right? Cause I don't know what the problem is, right? Like, I don't know, there's multiple winners and, you know, it doesn't even discuss, uh, you know, the overflow, not the overflow votes, um, the surplus votes until a later section, right? It doesn't mention it in the first section from what I remember. So, you know. Um, well, I have the, which version you're reading? I added a whole example that, that moved surplus votes around. That's now uh, whichever one you sent out late yesterday. Hmm. 
Okay. So let me scroll down here. By the way, Peggy just emailed me. She's got mixed up on the time and she'll be here in a minute. Oh, okay. Um, I understand what you're saying that we want to make sure it's clear that the, the choice of method is, is important, but I also don't want to immediately right. so like, down. Right. All I'm saying is that, you know, the, the discussion of tabulation methods might as well not even be in there if they don't understand why they're there, right? Like right here, it says, when implement in section three, it says, when implementing RCV for local elections, the town will need to choose which specific multi-winner RCV method to use. That raises an enormous number of questions right off the bat that there are no immediate answers to, right? You know, and it says like, oh, the literature on social choice and electoral methods finds fault with every system. It's like we're diving right into a discussion of like the methods, but it doesn't answer the core question of like, what are the methods? Why are they used? What's the problem that's being solved? Right. Okay, so we could just insert at the very beginning of section three, the context for uh, the rest of section three. Right, exactly. You know, it could be, you know, I'm not, don't, don't write down what I'm saying because I'm just, you know, getting the, you know, zeitgeist of it, but right. Like, you know, um, when dealing with multi-winner elections after a, you know, winner has mm -hmm. met the calculated threshold for being a, you know, for winning the seat, the additional votes need to be redistributed uh, so that they are not wasted. There are several ways of doing this, you know, these are the methods that we have, you know, looked through and discussed that are most fair and most represented, right? Just with something Chief. simple like that, it's like, okay, I understand. There's extra redistribution that happens in a multi-seat election that doesn't happen in a single seat. I may not fully understand how that occurs or why it happens, but now I have some grounding and basis for going through you know, clearly that's a problem that needs to be mm -hmm. solved. And here are the different methods that they've looked at to solve that problem. Even if I don't fully understand it, I can follow along, right? It seems to me that um, it's good not only to highlight it either in bold or in a different color, what are the uh, summary is, but at the beginning of each section. So, because a lot of people are going to skim. And so maybe in the beginning, you know, yeah. just say exactly what you're saying, but then say, and here's the method that we select, read down, to find out why, you know what I mean? Yeah. And pictures just, are great. Like every time yeah. I came across a chart on this, I was like, excellent. <laughs> like <Right. laughs> I could read this paragraph, but I can also just look at this picture and understand what they're trying to get at. Right. You know, so if we just had also, you know, one of those nice, you know, examples where it yeah. just shows like the extra votes on top of the winning threshold and an arrow, you know, pointing towards redistribution. Right. And it's like, well, how does that happen? Here's what we've thought about. Exactly. I mean, we do have to remember that a lot of these folks on the um, who are reviewing this really know nothing about it. So, and, you know, we'd also don't know how much they want to dive into it. So we kind of have to have, you know, just the overview for everybody and then be able to dig deeper for others. And you're absolutely right that the more graphics we can have, the better. We do have the time constraints. Um, you know, in a perfect world, we'd have the same names throughout for examples. You know what I mean? Weave it through, but again, that's something that we just don't have time to do. I see Peggy. Yep, Peggy's in. Ah, great. So then let me add to the list. So, um, so one of the suggestions is kind of slid in there is that the the beginning of each of these sections to have a little summary at the, the top to summarize the content of that section to help guide the reader. Is that what I was hearing? Yeah, I think anything we can do to help guide the readers <laughs> will be good. Um, first, let me apologize. I had two other Zooms today. I just got mixed up on the time. I'm so sorry. 
Um, thank you, Ellen. I would have come at 3.30, which is when I thought we were starting. <laughs> we will never forgive you, Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, I know. <clears throat> Barred for life. Um, just on this last point, this little summary at the beginning of each section, is that in addition to an executive summary or is that instead of an executive summary? Um, so this, we're just talking about at the top of each section. So yeah, so the, the whole report will have a first bit that will emphasize the steps that the town needs to take. So that's our executive summary. It's an addition to Peggy. Okay. So that if they're, you know, okay, they've read the executive summary very closely because everyone does because they're like, I just want to know what the whole thing is. Yep. I want the cliff notes. And then at the head of each section, it'll give them a very succinct, you know, you know, quote unquote, in bold uh, item if they're just skimming to say like, here's what this section recommends or is about or the problem it's addressing or whatever it is. Okay. Yeah, right. that so was the only really, you know, not nitpicky thing that I saw. Everything else looked pretty solid. All right. Uh, in terms of the overall ordering, so I wanted to maybe just take a minute just to think about the overall ordering of the sections and the appendices here. Did anyone want a change to any of that? Um, uh, I would probably move section five and six above section three and four. Move it to be in that order and I'll, I'll fix the numbering later. Right, because we're Why going from that? more broad to more granular as we go down the document, right? Yes. I might, yes, I, I get that. On the other hand, um, in terms of like understanding how ranked choice voting works, the tabulation method and ballot errors give more, they're sort of more background and before we have to actually think about the actual steps. That's true. Like that. Yeah, I'm not heavily committed. I just, you know, I just put it out there. Yeah, so maybe <coughs> that's something always easy to change later. So if you think later of a, a good method, a good reason for why a flow might, you know, you need some kind of previous sections information to feed into the next one, we can always switch it around. So for now, I'll just leave it since there don't seem to be strong feelings for definitely changing it. Um, so, um, could we start maybe drafting a timeline? So sort of if we could collectively think of all the steps that we want to uh, recommend to the town council, what do they need to be doing? Things, for example, Lauren really recommended they immediately start to get in touch with the elections division and work out um, a, a plan for how they're likely to implement it to get them on board to help with passing the special act, you know, contacting people like Mindy Gome um, and other key legis you know, state legislatures who could help you know, uh, advocate for the special act. And then of course, getting the special act uh, submitted. So there's a couple of things that have specific dates that need, you know, stuff need to be have, uh, we need to have stuff done by, and I think we should include those. Uh, some of these things, we don't necessarily have the expertise to really be able to say how long it's gonna take and therefore how early people need to approach it, like purchasing. I haven't got a clue, right? Uh, you know, 
Peggy might have some experience up her sleeve about like how long it takes to buy voting machines that she hasn't told us, but you know, I, I certainly don't. So for the rest of it, we might we might not want to you know pretend to have a comprehensive timeline for when stuff needs to get done, but we might want to have you know several specific dates that we know things need to be in by and how long we think stuff's gonna you know maybe we have an idea of how long we think something's gonna take. Um, and put that there and then, you know, let the people who have a lot of more information about how long stuff like that uh, takes to get done to actually fill it in. Sure. And maybe I should just on... give it a different name. I didn't, I didn't mean to actually have dates by timeline. I really meant to-do list. What is the town council's to-do list? And we can insert dates as we know them and the rest may be a little just this needs to get done before this can get done. So they need to sign the legislation or the bylaw, whatever it is, and get uh, approval. Yeah, emergency approval, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd call it action items. <laughs> action items, that's good. Yeah, for town counts, action items, yeah. So going back even a step before that, are you then presenting this, Tanya, at one of their meetings in December? What's that plan? I don't know how this works. I was going to ship this off to them on December 1st and wait for them to invite me okay. to do whatever the next steps are. They will, okay. they will probably set a meeting once they get the agenda set, whatever um, meeting that goes on, that's when you'll find out. And then is it one of those things, Sue, where they're going to have to get... Um, they, like almost to a second reading where they get a, um, input from the town, from people in the town, or is it something where they're just gonna be able to decide on their own? Um, I think the way the charter is worded, I think they just decide on their own. Okay. Yeah. So when we send this report off December 1st, we may want to include a, a transmittal letter that uh, clues them into the fact that there's a list of action items and some of those items are going to require a lot of lead time. and Therefore, they need to look into it rather quickly. Mm -hmm. You don't want them to say, well, uh, this isn't urgent. We're going to put this off until March. Mm -hmm. The first thing they need to do is right, decide whether to proceed with implementation. Right. And based on the charter, it's probably either going to be approve or amend and approve or submit for revision, right? Because they have to pass something. Yes. Um, if they decide the time is too tight, then they'll need to submit some, a essentially a, a I know this is another special act officially, but essentially just requesting that we could run the next local election in the current way to give more time to get all our ducks in a row. Sue, so are the um, local elections every other year? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So is next year is the first one. The way the charter is worded, right? There's just nothing. There's a vacuum for what the next local election will be. Is that correct? Yeah. But it, what do you mean there's a vacuum? There, there, there's, nothing, there's nothing governing how the next local election will run. Oh, oh. You have to, no. some, it, something has to be put forward saying this is how it's going to be run. Whether, well, it would probably fall back to state law, plurality voting. I was just in a meeting with Paul and he was asking me the same question. Mm. You know, in our very first meeting with Bachman, uh, he said, like, we addressed this issue uh, and uh, said that you know he might want to submit a um, special election request uh, to allow us to run the election the same as we always had in the case that we don't have ranked choice voting uh, right. by then. Um, my understanding was that he was going to go do that. Interesting. But Ooh. it sounds like that's not the case. Yeah. Well, if, if, I if, think it would have to come from the town council. Sorry, go ahead. Well, it may or may not be the case, but it does seem like um, if Paul thinks it's it's the case, then Paul should do that, and he should do that no matter what happen what the town council 
decides about RCV. Right. Um, so we have a backup. He do, yeah. yeah, he could do that right now. It yep. just says if we don't have a new thing in place, we mm -hmm. keep running it like we did. Yeah, I remember uh, he mentioned that, uh, you know, he could have it worded so that any subsequent special request would supersede, you know, the initial request. So that in case we do get it done in time, it would, you know, overrule the, uh, the one he had already put in. All right. So what are the other things that we want to recommend the town council do? So there was the um, interacting with the, the elections division to... Right, reaching out to the elections division. Mm -hmm. And reaching out to our local legislators. Um, if the um, if the town's council is going to decide whether or not ranked choice voting is feasible based on a cost issue, then they need to get that information from LHS and ESNS, but particularly LHS. Um, you know, if, if we are implementing RCV, then they need to start doing stuff, buying machines, voter education, um, staff training, budgeting for, you know, increased election staff. Yeah, I think the budgeting is the most important. Exactly. Budgeting is going to be the most important because who's to say what year budget it'll be in? Maybe they need to think about preliminary elections or at least when those preliminary elections would happen if we need them. I'm, I'm not clear on who decides that. Um, that's a state requirement or what? It has to do with the number of candidates. Right. So but if there's uh, more than four candidates for the two seats, then there's a preliminary. If not, they don't have to have one. Is that that's what that, we learned? That's in the charter. That's what, that was only uh, for the, the very first. Works. That was the only for the right. very first election, though. That's not for preceding elections. I mean, succeeding elections. So there is no rule at all right now. No, 
There's nothing in state law either. Even better. <laughs> so that's something, yeah, we'd have to determine. Right. Um, yeah. it, Basically, and if we can't fit the number of candidates on our ballot, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Unless they have really short names. Yeah. Um, and then also it's actually hiring certain staff to do the implementation because it's, I don't think there's current staff available for all of these things. So they have to figure out if there would be additional staffing, if there'd be a committee like ours that's in charge of overseeing implementation or how it's going to be done. Or if Sue gets to hire a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Yeah. And if they're consultants or full time. <laughs> for the training stuff, uh, I mean, this is for voter education, but LHS does uh, training seminars on the use of both the machines and the, the software, so. For money or gummy bears, I'm not sure which one, but I strongly suspect the former. All right, so we got a bunch of stuff down here. And when I send the sort of our, our next draft out, feel free to add, you know, modulate these. I think we got the main things down. So I'm gonna keep moving along. Um, so we had some other things here. Um, so I think the other big thing I'd like us while we're all together that we really should be discussing as a group is the are the recommendations to really finalize that we have some sort of recommendations built in to the draft already, but we should really make sure we all agree that those are what we want to recommend. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, this was. Oh, um, so, so maybe we can just go section by section. Let me know if you're, as, as we go along, let me know if there's other uh, things you wanted to do to different sections. So let's maybe just uh, back up here a second, go section by section. Um, in the first section, did anyone have comments on changes they, they want to this? I should be able to fill in that number now since we know exactly how many total meetings we'll have. I can fill that number in. Uh, just a, a quick note. Uh, the example one in section one, it lists Pam and Pete. Uh, and yes, we're, we, I mean, I know it's the first name versus last name, but we do have Dorothy Pam as a current counselor. We should make sure to avoid using names which are um, mapped to current counselors. Sure. That's, that's section two. We're in section one. Oh, did I miss it? Oh, my layout's weird. Okay. Okay, so just check if there's anything else that we did in our as part of our work that you wanted added to this list of stuff that people were, were okay with our summary of what we got up to. Yeah, the only thing I saw was that um, uh, the to educate Amherst voters about anticipated changes to ranked choice voting. Um, that was important work uh, that we did. At the same time, I don't know, there's just something about putting it in a document where we're trying to convince the town council to change to rank choice voting. That feels weird. Um, but that may just be me. So I don't think we are trying to convince them. Uh, it's mandated through the through the charter. Our, our work is more about implementation rather than persuasion. Yeah. And right. it's document is something we did. So, and it's posted on the committee website. So I thought we should, there should be in there something, something we did. Um, and, and it's exactly what, I mean, we educated voters about the anticipated change. You know, if the town council decides it's impossible to do this, then that's another problem. But as far as we know, we're going ahead with it. Yeah, not everything we anticipate actually happens, I guess, so. 
Um, I mean, would you feel more comfortable if we just changed that? No, you don't have to change it at all. I, like I said, you know, it, it seemed a little weird to me, but I also recognize that it might just be me and it seems that that's the case. So then it's no problem. We also refer to it later um, in the section John wrote uh, about our experience with that. So I think having it in this section is important. Yeah, that's fine. All right. All right, so then let's move to two. So you just want to change. Yeah, I'm happy. I mean, I just, I was just doing P names for purple and M names for magenta, just to not have things be blue and red, but something else. Yeah, I would, I would find another color that's, uh, has different, uh, a significantly contrasting value than purple and pink. Um, my experience as a game developer says that some people are going to have problems with that. And depending on what kind of monitor they're looking at it on, it may not stick out as much as you want it to. OK, what would you suggest for the two colors? Uh, I'll, I'll look at the wheel a little later and come up with one, OK? OK. I, I would also suggest not using such Caucasian names. Maybe have Maria. I mean, think about our town. Sure, yeah, so send me. Well, depending on the colors you pick, <laughs> then we'll go for the names. Uh, what was it? Oh, yeah, I found the uh, example introduction a little confusing because it's implying that people are voting by platform when we vote by candidate. And I know that that's not the case for the actual example, but the text makes it seem like that. Again? So it says, suppose the 500 voters in the district are evenly, nearly evenly divided between the two platforms, mm -hmm. right? Like, without further context, that... Uh, that seems to imply that like, well, some people voted for this platform and some people voted for that platform. And I understand the intent is to say like, you know, maybe, you know, 20% 20, 20 voted for, uh, you know, Pam and then, you know, 30% voted for Pete, you know, and that's 50%, right? But it makes it seem like you're voting for platforms, not individuals. Oh, I see. So the... Uh... Yeah, I had to I had to read further into the example to be like, wait, wait, does that mean that, you know, they're on a ballot together? Does that mean, you know, is it like president and vice president or does that mean it's and I had to actually look down at the example and be like, wait, OK, no, they got different numbers of ballots each. And then I calculated. I looked at 155 plus 100. Oh, OK, I got gotcha. you. I could just get rid of that and just say. There's 500 voters and this many approve those two and this many approve those two. Right. Yeah, 500 put their votes towards Pam or Pete, and then 500 put their vote towards Meg or Max. Yeah. Well, you get a vote for two, right? Under the current system. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you can think of a better wording than platform, I'm just trying to make an example where you have kind of, you know, this constituency and some other constituency and making sure they both get representatives, but I don't know what the best wording is to just, I just wanted to make a simple example to contrast the current system with the, um, how they were, uh, as far as I understand it from talking with Mandy, how they were really envisioning these two districts, two uh, councilor districts to work, that the ranking yeah. voting was kind of tied in with making the representation work better with having the two districts instead of single, uh, sorry, two member districts instead of single member districts. Thing is, I'm remembering the ballot the first time we don't vote we still vote in precincts. We still have precinct one. Um, I'm, I'm gonna have to look at an old ballot. I'm not sure this is accurate. Well, we have the ballot. Where are we here? Somewhere. Where are the ballots? It's so long now, there's like on and on and on. No, no, that's, that's the one you're proposing, but um, the original ballot. It's the... Is it here? here somewhere? Oh, it is towards the top. It's in. Sorry, it's squirrel like crazy on you. 
Oh, we only put in the, the school, school committee. committee. We didn't put in the whole ballot. But they're still voting for five people. So you're still on each, in each precinct, they're still voting for five people. Well, this is school committee. But that would be the same for uh, counselors. You're still voting for, well, 13, but spread out between five districts, but 10 precincts. Right, so I think I remember it too. So for um, your precinct, it would say pick two, vote for no more than two. That's what I'm saying. And you just got you just have the people in your precinct, and then it says for the um, for the seats for the for the town. Whatever there were called. separate oh, races for the town. There were two the separate precinct. races. Yeah. So it was yeah. precinct right. only, and then it was for the ones across the town. Sorry, the at-large seats, that's what they're called. So there were two separate right. races on each ballot. Well, this coming November, it's gonna be all the races on one ballot, counselor, school committee, redevelopment, housing authority, elector, um, and Jones Library. Yep. Lane's but there will still be separate. <laughs> but there still will be separate ballots for each of the different precincts. Yeah, you still have to, yeah, we still have our precincts mm -hmm. one through 10, yeah. Right, or districts, there'll be five. Well, it says, it does say on the ballot, I believe precinct one, district one, or whatever it's in. Um, yep. Precinct two, district three, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're still voting by precinct though. I was looking, I thought I had a Hammer's ballot right here, but it's somehow eluding me. Um, but yeah, so maybe maybe it would help, help theirs once I figure out where I put that um, to stick in a little snippet of what, what the current ballot looks like to remind people. Of, so we've only voted once this way. So it's not like people will be super familiar with the new district counselor setup. If it's sure one. There, it's on it's on the web page. If you just go under um, town clerk and um, upcoming and or voter information, and then upcoming and past elections, you'll see the last town election, and the ballot will be there. Yeah, yeah I just, and I know I have it downloaded. Just it's disappeared. Where it went. All right. Um, let me just make a little note to myself there. Fix that example up a bit. All right. Then I guess so. So here's one of the comments John just sent me. So just some wording, I guess. Um, other other concerns about section two. No. One one question I had is whether the um, Amherst specific implementation should be a subsection of section two or whether it should be its own section. Yeah. That strikes me as something that will that's an area that the town council should zoom in on, even if they're skimming everything else that they want to be able to find right away. Yeah, that's a good point. So yeah, we can easily do that. So what, what else did we have previous year? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense to me. The rest was really just talking in general about ranked choice voting. And then here we really are getting some more details. Okay, that's a good idea. So we'll, we'll make that its own section, but kept in this, this position overall, just elevated. 
I, I guess. We'll see. In the um, paragraph on preliminary, preliminary elections at the very end of the section, mm -hmm. it says uh, if the number of candidates running in one of the local elections is too large, and it, I, I think we ought to define what we mean by too large, too large for a ballot, too large for ranking purposes, give, give them some kind of uh, guidance for how they make that decision. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the answer is, but. Does anyone have a feeling about that? What, what should be the purpose of a preliminary election? To reduce the number of candidates to amount that can fit on the ballot. <laughs> Are we limited so, yes. at all by the machinery? What was that? Are we limited at all by the machinery, by the tabulators? Uh, no, we're limited by the ballot design. Okay. More or less one of the same, but yeah. Yeah, so we should say that. Uh, getting back to what Sue said, the reason um, they did it for the town elections was just to simplify things for, um, for the runoffs so that there weren't so many candidates to have to look at at once. And people could then narrow it down and then have to choose from among four as opposed to choosing from five, six, seven. That's why. Well, it was in the charter. We basically were just following instructions based on the charter. Um, right, but in, ter but it in was terms the, of, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, yeah, but it was the very first election and there were more candidates. Yeah, yep. Right, and having worked on the election, it would have been very confusing if there were seven candidates wow. for two seats. No. I wouldn't find that confusing personally. No, I know. Yeah. I was a lot of our races have a lot of people in them. And all you do is I say like, well, I only know these two people, so I'm voting for them. Oh, do you remember town well, meeting? I, yeah. Town yeah, meeting it was crazy. Members? And nobody know any idea what they were doing. They're just like, I know that name. I know that name. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 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 But no one, no one ever knew their platforms or what they were standing for. And I think that's, yeah. that's a problem when you've got so many candidates is... Uh -huh. If the town wants to end up doing its own preliminary for other reasons, that's fine. But in terms of us, I think all that really matters on our end is that, uh, you know, they may have to run a preliminary just to whittle down the number of people so that it fits on the ballot. So that's when we say true. fits on the ballot, are we talking about uh, in order to try and keep the election to a single page? No, no. Like the there's a because the more people you have, the further the list expands horizontally because of the number of rankings that you have to provide because you have to provide some number of rankings, which we can limit. Right. Uh, we can decide that uh, even if there's 100 people uh, in the race, if there's only five seats, we're only going to provide eight or 10, uh, you know, rankings for people to choose from. Um, but yeah. Plus, don't forget you have to have a write-in space for every single candidate. Yeah. I mean seats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sue, so do we need to? Have so I guess you're right, John. It is about keeping it to like at least two pages, or at most two pages, if possible. So we we might just want to expand some of the explanation here to uh, express what it is we're trying to get at. Otherwise, I don't think they'll know what too large means. Yeah, that, that makes that sense. Point. And Sue, just to, for clarity, if we're um, if you're we're electing to two seats, we would need two write-in spots. Is that yes, correct? That's okay. correct. That's yep. correct. Got to be able to write Kanye West two times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, we saw some of those ballots. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> I saw the map of the number of people who voted for Kanye West by state, and I was like, they don't have any for mass. That's a lie. I saw at least one. They had to get five <laughs> votes or more to be written down. Otherwise, they go into all others. Yeah. Mm. We only saw a couple of them, actually. All right. So let's keep chugging. So for section three, we already had the suggestion to we need to beef up the beginning part to really motivate why we need to be worrying 
about tabulation methods. Of right. What's the problem that we're trying to address with this section? Yeah. Right. But then otherwise, so if we beef up that first part, otherwise, and maybe add a visualization if we can. Um, anything else with this section? No, I think it's fine. We did. I mean, it's easily one of the more detailed sections. Um, if you ended up wanting to shorten it down, you could probably just remove explanation of um, random and uh, weighted, or no, the inclusive Gregory method, uh, because those don't meet our criteria. Mm -hmm. And then just dive into uh, the details of, you know, weighted inclusive Gregory method versus Meeks method and why we chose to recommend uh, Wiggum. Yep. But no, I don't think we need to worry about shortening it, I think. Yeah. I think the only comment I had on this section other than that was uh, uh, the very bottom in point four. Yeah, um, that last paragraph where it uh, we recommend uh, using the Wigan method. I think it's also important to specifically point out that random and uh, inclusive do not meet the criteria and uh, while I, uh, you know, while I'm on board with everybody that we should make the actual uh, legislation broad, we should write it so that it excludes those two previous methods so nobody does crazy things. All right, so here you want to add a sentence, essentially saying ran random and inclusive are Right or just out of the two methods that meet our criteria, Meeks and Wiggum, we recommend the use of Wiggum, right? Oh, I see. Okay. So I'm sorry, perhaps I missed this when you were talking. Did you already talk about Lauren's special act? Um, because she really wants us to name the method that we're going to use. Even That's though. Up to us. East Hampton didn't go anywhere near that detailed, so I'm not sure we want to go there. I well, I agree with you, and so I just wondered whether other people on the commission felt the same. So, I also wouldn't uh, be opposed if we wanted to write it. I don't even. I mean, I'm sure we could talk to Lauren and figure out how to do this, but um, so that uh, on initial implementation, they have to do it a certain way, but it doesn't prevent them from changing it in the future. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right, so that the uh, the council has less choices to worry about. It's like, no, you're gonna go with Wiggum, and you know you're gonna do this and that. And if you want to change it in the future, that's great. But for the initial setup, go with this. Um, All right, so let's move on to section four. Um, so there are a couple things Peggy had highlighted that. Um, that we should just touch base on. Uh, the first is um, on the sentence about the types of errors that could be caught by, you know, when you scan your ballot in, um, what the wording should be. Identified instead of caught. And, and Sue, when people vote early at Town Hall or the Bank Center, are those votes tabulated then or are they just stored? No, they're stored. That's what the central tabulation facility was all about. Okay. Yeah. So, so any early voting and mail-in voting will not be tabulated at the time? Right. Not, not according to current state law. That could we change. Wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to, if this is what you're getting at, we wouldn't be able to run it through, discover an error, and then get back to the people and say, like, no. hey, you made a mistake. No. Yeah, yeah no. no. No curing of ballots, as they call them some places. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Did you make those calls? <laughs> no, if the tabulator can't read it, it becomes a hand count. And then when the uh, voter, the workers um, look at it, if they can't determine voter intent, it doesn't, that race doesn't get counted, or if it's an overvote or in the current system. Mm -hmm. All right. I think, I think as we stated, I mean, it depends on exactly the machine they get, which errors could potentially be caught. So I don't think we need to specify here. Just it alerts them that, you know, 
there can be some things caught, but not everything. Um, just so they're aware of that. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so then the other question was the uh, recommendation um, for interpreting certain of these ballot errors. With everybody else on the first ones, but I still, and I remember this meeting, I still strongly disagree about the multiple skipped ranks. Um, I do believe that, and I understand the argument the other way. Um, I, I believe that even if there are multiple skipped ranks, while there are, it adds to the potential number of things that the voter could be intending, the only thing we can still really say for sure is that they did mark that person as a rank. Um, and that rank falls after their first choice. Uh, and I think that it more closely honors the intent by just racking it back up to two for that example. And I know that's that's position differs from others, but that's mine. It's a good argument. I, I really don't know what to do on that one. Um, I think that it comes, in the end, it will come down to voter education. We wanna make sure that people understand what will happen. Yeah if they fill out their ballot that way. And yeah. some people won't know. So we have, you know. I, I, I also think it's more in line with how the other errors are handled, right? Because if you skip one and it just shifts up, your assumption would automatically be that, well, if I miss any number, they'll just shift up. But in this case, it would be different, right? Oh, but if you miss more than one, you lose it all. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's true, right. If there were, if we were ranking like six people and you ranked one, four, five, and six, it would be a shame to lose the rankings on four, five, and six altogether. So yeah, I see your point. I'm not, I don't know what the answer is. I'm, I'm. What's, I'm what's the counter argument? Why have some jurisdictions used other, uh, this other approach? I'm not sure what other jurisdictions have done. Um, my thinking when I wrote this was that if, if it were the case where somebody ranked a first choice and a last choice, and there were several rankings in between, that that would be a clear indication that somebody had a first choice and a last choice. Um, and so moving that last choice up to number two would be against their intent. However, I you know, it's, it's very tricky because at what point do you know whether it's a first and last choice or just a misunderstanding of the ranking or whatever, I, uh, I Right, get... and given that they only ranked two, even if you shifted it up to two, it's still their last choice, right? Because <laughs> we don't cover the edge case where, uh, you know, some voter might want to say, well, this is my first choice, but if they get eliminated, and then also using this example, let's say, uh, you know, Julius and Robert get eliminated. I mean, that's not even possible, but uh, yeah, it's just, it's confusing. I don't, but if you look below uh, where Peggy wrote, um, other municipalities have decided uh, to um, shift up, or am I confusing it with the multiple marked? You're confusing it with the multiple marked. I see. Yeah. I would strongly suggest just having them shift up it's less things to explain to the voter. It's like, hey, if you skip a couple spots, we just shift them up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, if we do that, I, I think it's important. I just remember when we were doing the candy thing, a lot of people put something as their last choice. They said, oh, I don't like that one. I'll make it my last choice. I'm like, well, is that one of your choices or you don't want that one to win? Oh, well, I wouldn't want that one to win. I said, well, then maybe you don't color it in. So right. it's, a, it's part of the education process. Because I yeah. think a lot of times people do put their last choice as something they don't want, but mm -hmm. they feel like they should vote for everything. Yeah, I agree. And, and that seems like something we need to address with voter education rather than yeah. uh, getting into the muddy waters of trying to interpret somebody's intent too carefully when we don't have that information in this kind of situation. That's also, how is this ballot counted? I mean, is the software going to be knowing that if we choose to do it this way, it's going to automatically move everything over or are these going to be hand counted ballots? Uh, I, oh man, uh, my memory is a little foggy here, but I think the, the cast vote record will actually still just record it as first and fourth. And it's the uh, RTR software or the, the central tallying software that will actually handle uh, those issues. Um, 
although it, so it will won't be a, it won't be a manual adjustment no it won't be a manual adjustment yeah yeah and, and that'd be something to you know say that the the town did decide to go to democracy suite of working out with them what options we have for interpreting voter intent and um what choices we have for in terms of you know can it, can it do it this way or can it do it that way? Hopefully it has a lot of flexibility. I mean, it should be easy enough for them to program. The question is just whether they have bothered Want to, to or it. not. If yeah. we're big enough it's fish, yeah. <laughs> so. does, the, um, does the universal tabulator support that? I know it supports several error handling, but you're, you dug the most into that, Tanya. I don't remember anymore. It definitely has some different different options that you yeah. can use. The universal tabulator, sorry to interject, does support both options, multiple skipped and no skipped. And, okay. Um, and Democracy Suite has a ton of all of these options, whether you do multi-skipped as truncated or you promote the, the later ranks. Okay, that's good to know. Do you, do you know what uh, most jurisdictions opt for? Uh, with the multiple skipped, it does vary. So Cambridge does promote. So if you go to a Cambridge voting booth, you vote somebody first and somebody 25th, that 25th vote becomes your, your second vote, which, you know, some people do. Um, interestingly, Minneapolis used to do if you skipped multiple, um, it was truncated and they switched to promoting them. Uh, so that's one where it went the in the other direction, the way I think Jesse was suggesting. So um, there's variety there as to what people do. There was a comment that said, oh, some people in the candy election are saying, that's my last choice, so I'm marking it last. I just want to be clear, that's fine so long as the other ranks are filled in and it's the same intent. The only right. question is whether there's multiple skipping. In between. Yeah, if I, if I put, you know, cherry as my first and licorice as my last on, you know, the fourth choice, even though it gets promoted to second, it's still my last choice, right? Cherry's first, licorice is last. It still carries the intent based on what we absolutely know, rather than, you know, trying to interpret their intent and also interpret generalized intent, right? Because if we're making a computer programming rule that says, you know, if you skip two, then we're assuming you mean this. Uh, but that's making an assumption about every voter's intent based on information we do not have. And I think that's risky. Okay, I'm convinced. I think we should do, I think we should promote rather than truncate. And that we should, or at least we should recommend that. Um, I, you know, however the town council decides to implement this, I can't imagine that they're not going to need um, some sort of committee to make this happen. Um, and these, this level of decision could be left to that committee. So what I'll, I'll do is we can, you know, so to give, provide sort of full information, we can provide, you know, what are sort of both options here and then say, so does the commit, the, the others on the committee agree now that you would like us to recommend the moving the vote up or yeah to, yep yeah. promote and educate it's ultra important to to minimize these sort of errors to really make sure the voters understand how to fill it out mm -hmm. so hopefully these cases will be minimal yep and i think that'll be easier when we just have the general rule that if you miss some it's shifted up as opposed to an extra right. edge case which they have to pay attention to sue any thoughts in future um elections about um mail-in voting if it's going to stick around or is it a one-off we hope just one off year <laughs> um well actually it's funny the legislators are meeting today about voting for the spring elections and they're going to have mail-in voting um, they're still working it out, but as for the fall, I don't know. I really don't know. It was a, it was a uh, emergency regulation, so right. yeah. There's absentee voting that's still going to apply, but um, right. No but excuse unlike voting. California, yeah, I wonder if they're going to stick with no excuse like California and so many other states. I I couldn't even begin to guess. What would you recommend? What would you want? <laughs> 
No comment. <laughs> <laughs> this is being recorded. <laughs> All right, so there was that recommendation, but then we, um, let's see, so what are all the cases? So the, repeat candidates or candidates rank more than once. So that's simple enough. You just keep them at their highest rank. So yep. the skipped ranking was talked about so then duplicate rankings so so, so when I, call, I called them duplicate rankings here because um lauren had suggested we not use overvote yeah and, um, she used overvote in the yeah. um, legislation so i you know i just throw that out i think we should maybe remind her that overvote for us is different because that was a confusing point earlier and it's she said it's defined in law as to what an overvote is and that's not what we that's not what we're intending right which is why you put it in there as duplicate rankings right well it is actually kind of what we intended which is that more than one per person gets voted at the same time you know in in um in a single seat plurality vote if you vote for two people that's an overvote mm. and here if you vote for two people at rank number two it's a, she's calling that an overvote. Oh so yeah, that makes sense. It's essentially the same thing, but I'm not sure. Um, like, I just want to be clear. Maybe we should say we could call it duplicate rankings here and in parentheses put overvote or something like that. In the terms that she sent back for the act, she mm -hmm. did say the word overvote shall be re the result of a voter ranks more than one candidate at the same ranking. Right. One of the definitions, so. Right. Could tie it together. All right, and what was our recommendation for this? So we, we have marked that we follow the model of discarding the candidates with equal, equal rankings as well as all candidates with lower rankings than those equally ranked candidates. So is that that's still the recommendation that we wanna to stick to for this case? Uh, say that again, uh, just discarding everything below the duplicate candidates. Yes. Yeah, I think that makes sense to me. All right, good. Like, it'd be nice to preserve the further ones, but then you run into the problem I was mentioning above, which is that assumes something about their intent, which we can't assume. And I think it's likely that people will get pretty pissed off if they found out that you know, the candidates they overvoted for lost because, you know, their lower ranking vote ended up counting towards a different candidate. All right. Right, and then we have I forgot, we already have this section that has um, some of this information so I can uh, blend in sort of the, the action items uh, in, in to fill out some more of the section five. Um, this, this is really, I guess, focused on state approval. Just a heads up, it's 425, and I think I only set the Zoom up till 430. So okay. Just, just so you know. So, so yes, yeah, so maybe we should just uh, 
catchphrase and strategy, are, are people able to stay a little longer to get a little more work done collectively? Or do we want to, at this point, switch to back to the email me your comments and I will keep collating them model? I do need I to think, bail out at 4.30. Okay, so let's plan on wrapping up and we'll... Uh, um, one of the one of the things that you identified that we we need to do is to uh, uh, write up some additional material, um, and I was I am willing to take a stab at the executive summary. I mean, we don't want to stab anybody. We we just want them to <laughs> read it. I'm dangerous that way. Super. So yeah. So if you could write up an executive summary. Um, is anyone willing to, um, I guess maybe Jesse, are you willing to, since you brought up the, where was this way back in like section three or whatever, the, um, the part you what want. What is the problem? Yeah. Yeah, where we are, yeah, here. So Jesse, could you maybe um, send me some text for how you'd like to sort of fill that out to better justify? Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, what were the other things that needed still to be written? Uh, we need to change the example in uh, whatever the last section example. we recovered is to be one where they shift forward instead. We can actually just eliminate that example. I mean, if we're if what we're doing is shifting forward for all skipped rankings, I don't think we need to give more than one example for that. So we okay. just take out the um, that second skipped ranking example. Okay. And uh, maybe and it, maybe the text I can, needs to be written, be written a little bit. And why don't I do that? Yeah, okay. like one or more. Yep. Or yeah, any yeah, number I'll, of. I'll clean yeah. up that section with that understanding. Great. Um, and we do need to figure out our recommendations. <laughs> section eight. I mean, we need to write them down. We've pretty much figured it out, right? Yes. So they're, they're sprinkled like at the end of all these right. sections. Yeah. I thought it would be good to gather them together. Absolutely. In yeah. One place. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So, if you're, Ellen, if you're willing to kind of read through and see <laughs> all the different sure. things you recommend and, and put those together into that section, that'd be great. And Okay, one thing that's kind of been niggling at me is when the section with the magenta and the purple, when we talk about the different um, platforms. Um, so I don't know if you know the history, but with um, the first run for town council, there's um, actually a, a group called um, Amherst First or whatever. And um, some people are accusing them of being a PAC where they're really not a PAC. They're not you know, taking money the way a pack would do it. And mm -hmm. it just became a major confrontation in town. Uh, so when you good. refer to different platforms, it might actually, it, it will bring that up. Like, okay, okay, these are the people who are in favor of change in town, these people who aren't. So I don't know how to get around that with your example. Yeah. I can just drop the mention of platform and just say this many people approve these two and this many people approve these two and you know how many voters did we make happy with the outcome and avoid that issue altogether that's no problem. yeah okay great all right well we better wrap up i will save this and send it out to all of you so you have that as the the base to be building on um to then make your choice, your changes, send it back to me. I'll collate them all together into a single document, send it back out and we'll just try to keep iterating. Um, we'll have to discuss the uh, special act in more detail at our November 30th meeting and just really crack down and get that done at that meeting. And do you want me to do anything with the glossary at this point? With um, Lauren's terms? So, so I <coughs> pasted in there the things that seem most relevant. Um, feel free to add any further terms you think would be helpful to have compiled into there that we use uh, in the report. Um, so feel free to sprinkle those in as needed. Probably be important to make sure that it coincides Lawrence. with the, uh, yeah, with Lawrence, with the special act. Yeah, I would add Lawrence terms to it. Well, the Lauren special act will be pasted in as the first appendix. So that's already there. 
Right. But if someone goes to a glossary looking for a definition, that's where they would go. Necess you know, again, I don't expect people to read this cover to cover. Yeah. Well, we could, you could add to the glossary all of the terms that are in her special act so that we have just duplicate right. that glossary in our glossary. Yes, I would. All right. We have a plan. Is it? Um, yeah, we have a plan. Go ahead. Yep. So we just got to dig in and just get these last things done. Um, when do you want them back? We need deadlines. <laughs> Um, so like before Thanksgiving, so people can get it to me by like Tuesday, say okay. that I can collate it on Wednesday and get something out to get sort of the next round of stuff going. Sounds good. All right. My call to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All right. Great. Thank you all. Move Thank you all. Through. Have great Thanksgivings, everyone. I won't yep. be here. Yeah, you too. I look <laughs> forward you. to seeing my family oh, on the computer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Thanksgiving. Well, thankful we're all alive. There we go. And Tanya, oh, let me stop recording. <laughs>